my message this morning to you is all about the power that's in the tongue. And I start off by saying, don't waste your time looking back. You are not going that way. we the last day of the year. Let's leave the past. We all made mistakes. Leave it there. It's done. We can't do anything about it. But we can stand up and go forward. You are what you are today. What you said over yourself or what other people said about you. Words are like seeds. When you speak it out, it's like life that you are sowing. You are prophesying over your own life. What you are saying about yourself, you are the prophet of your life. And you don't realize it. We reap the fruit of our words. And we have the choice. Make sure that what you are sowing is good seed. If you want to plant potatoes, you're going to reap potatoes. If you're going to plant an orange tree, you are going to re reap oranges. It might be uh, sour oranges, but you won't re um, reap lemons. You can't talk negative and live a positive life. With your tongue, you're either cursing or blessing your own life. And we sometimes curse our life and we don't even realize it. Pay attention to what you are saying and let's stop cursing. Let's break with that today. My verses that I'm reading is out of the Amplified Bible. But Joanne made me a PowerPoint out of the NIV, so you will see NIV there, but not what I'm reading. Uh, Exodus 3 verse 14, we read that God said to Moses, I am who I am, and what I am, and I will be what I will be. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God is I am. He's working right now. He's meeting you right there on the place where you are. He's not the God of the past or the future. He's the God of the present tense. He's out of time. But it's awesome that he meets us right at the point where we are right now, where we need to break with stuff, or we, we want to grow in him. He meets us there. In Exodus 3 verse 16, we read, Go gather the elders of Israel together, the mature teachers and tribal leaders, and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. God is a God of generations. You are in this season for a reason. You are the purpose that God wants to use right now. That was of the generations. What are you leaving for your generations to come? But for the same that we receive good stuff from our generations, or ancestors, I must say, we also received curses and bad stuff that we need to deal with. Because we see here, God says, surely he has visited them and saw what has done to them in Egypt. We all have been in Egypt while we were in the world. We only went into promised land after we accepted the Lord Jesus in our lives. When you are talking, are you talking hope or hopelessness? Are you talking upholding or do you break down? What does your children hear in your house? Is it positive stuff, how the Lord provided to you, or 
just how big this mountain is in front of you. In Genesis 1, verse 1, 2, 3, we read, In the beginning God prepared, form, fashion, create the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, and an empty waste and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. My question to you today is, where are you in your life now? Are you on a dark spot? Do you struggle with finances, with your marriage, maybe with your children that does not serve the Lord yet? Or are you on a green pastures where you have God's peace? Because we see in verse 3, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God created with words. Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of likeness of God. He created them male and female. He created them. If you are a reborn, you've got God's spirit in you. And please, I'm not talking new age now. You are in Christ and Christ are in you. So if God created with words what you are saying, you are also creating. Voice. Sound travels and it travels. Where does it stop? It doesn't stop. It carries on and on and on and on. That's how come they still discover new galaxies today. Because God's create, creative voice, is that right? Still carries on. It's still creating. In Colossians 3 verse 8 to 10, But now put away and rid yourselves completely of all these things, anger, rage, bad feelings towards others, curses and slander, and foul-mouthed, abused, and shameful utterance from your lips. There's not one of us seated here that can say we don't have this in our lives. We all, some at another point, it pops out. And have clothed yourself with a new spiritual self, which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon, knowledge after the image, the likeness of him who created it. Come, Muka, all of us have work to do to become Christ-like. There's stuff that we need to get rid of. And we need to be clothed in God's likeness. James 3 verse 8 to 10. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is a restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable, evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father. And with it we curse men who are made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come forth blessing and cursings. These things, my brethren, ought not to be so. If we think about the person that make us feel hot around the collar, and we think that that person is also created to God's image, I think we look different to that person, isn't it? Because you look at the creation of God. Proverbs 4, verse 23 to 24. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard of out it flows the spring of life. Put away from your false and dishonest speech and willful and contrary talk. Put far away from you. The things, 10 verse, um, Proverbs 10, verse 24. The things a wicked man fears shall come upon him, but the desires of the uncompromisingly righteous shall be granted. And we even see in Job 
3 verse 25, For the things which I greatly feared came upon me, and that of which I am afraid befalls me. Negative thoughts come to all of us. But when you speak it, it becomes a reality. You may feel worried, but don't say that thoughts so that you get trapped by your words. You have the choice. Are you going to feed the negative thoughts or are you going to linger on worries? Choose to let them go. Start talking to God. Put your worries at His feet. Worship Him. Recite scripture. And you will, be fi you will find before you know your spirit is lifted up and the cloak of heaviness left. Proverbs 12 verse 6. The words of the wicked lie and wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 37, we see David here, um, where they went to, he took bread for, for his um, brothers, and the Philistine was there. And David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord will be with you. This is David's testimony. When he was at a bad spot, he went to his altar. And he remembered, he recalled how the Lord helped him out of bad situations. And he spoke those words. And we know that the Philistine was killed by David. What is the words that you speak out when you are in a bad spot? In Proverbs 12 verse 18, There are those who speak rashly with piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Are you an agent of the kingdom of Christ, or are you an agent of the darkness? What you say, is it uplifting? Is it building others? Or does it hurt people and break them down? Most of you guys, your children are already good, uh, big. There's only a few of small children. When you reprimand your children, do you reprimand them in such a way that they understand that you love them, but what they do is wrong? Or is the message that you send forth, you are wrong? You are a mistake. Do you speak life or do you speak death? In Proverbs 18 verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. For death or life. And then we see in Matthew 12, verse 34 to 37, where Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. He said, You offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the fullness, the overflow of the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I think if you think while you're around the dry fires and stuff, or when you socialize with your friends. What are they talking about? You can hear exactly what's going on in their lives, what is coming out of their mouths. The good man, from his inner good, treasure things for good things, and the evil man, out of his inner evil storehouse, flings forth the things of evil. But I tell you, on a day of judgment, man will have to give account of every idle, inoperative, non-working word they speak. For by your words you will be justified and acquitted, and by your words you will condemn and sentence. I think... Now, we must pause if we want to say something to somebody and think before we just utter words. This is, for me, wow. 
Proverbs 21 verse 23. Who, he who guards his mouth and his tongue keep himself from trouble. Did you guys know from one negative thing that you utter, you need 12 positive things to cancel it? So if you say something ugly to somebody, that person needs 12 positive statements to sort of erase that. In Numbers 14 verse 28, God himself is talking here. He tells Moses, Tell them, as I live, says the Lord, that you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. The Israelites were murmuring and always moaning and groaning while they were in the wilderness. And God came to Moses and he said to him, Tell them what I heard them saying. Because they used to say, why did you take us out of um, Egypt where we had all the meat and the, the papa ni vleispotte van Egypte? And you brought us into the wilderness so that we can die. And we know that all of them, over 20 years, passed on in the desert. It was only Joshua and Caleb that went into the promised land. Pay attention to what you say. Stop cursing yourself. Stop saying negative things about you or negative things about your friends or your children. Stop saying, I'm not good enough. I'm too poor. I'm too sick. Um, My child won't achieve it or I can't achieve it. Or Just stop with it because through Christ in you, he will strengthen you that everything is possible for you to do. Don't use words to describe your situation. Use it to change your situation. In tough times, you especially need to be on guard. Don't tell people how bad the medical report was or how sick you are. Or even nowadays, our government, how bad the government is, and we're not going to survive. We saw that I'm for sure, no, God is busy turning around our government. I say stop, hear from God. In your situation, have your quiet time, hear from God, and turn it around. It was about four weeks ago, my mom phoned the one, I think it was a Friday evening, and she said, please pray for protection. They found a farm attack markers on my brother's farm, and the police was there, and the, it was confirmation, and guara, guara, guara. And I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, what's going on here? Please, I want a word out of the scripture. And... The Lord gave me Deuteronomy 28, and it's an awesome, awesome chapter. Go and read it this afternoon. But what struck me there was that he said, if you stay and f- in my commands and follow my way, I w- your enemies will come in one direction to you, but they will flee away in several directions. And I had peace, and I could give that through to my brother, and nothing happened. Eventually, with their testimony, is the robbers went behind, I say robbers, the attackers, whatever, um, passed off, um, followed my sister-in-law, and all of a sudden the lights disappear. Something disrupt and disturb them because they flee away. Don't talk about your problem, but talk about your promises. And I want to take this further. Don't just talk about your promises. Walk in your promises. If God gave you a promise, speak it out. Breakthrough is coming. If you have guys got something that you got stuck in, 2018 is the year of supernatural breakthrough. Best days are still here, the first song that we sang. The best days for this village is still ahead. I'm healthy, I'm blessed, I'm a victor. 
God is going to turn our government around. Through the tongue, we all receive blessings, but we also all receive curses. Negative words have been spoken over you, either by your parents or your teachers or your family or your employee or your friends. Maybe they didn't say that you are useless or what, but you got the feeling, I don't belong here. I'm not loved. You had the feeling of rejection. Today I want to say, today is a day that you can drop it. Break with it. Let go of your past so God can open the doors of your future. In Psalm 71 verse 20, we read, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will not live a victorious life if you keep on relive the past. Choose to turn around and walk away. You can come up bitter or you can come out better. Don't just go through pain, but grow through it. Every difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger. My question to you now is to who did you give authority to determine your worth? Who did you place on the seat of your heart? In Psalm 9, verse 1 and 4, the Lord said, I, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart, for you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as a righteous judge. If this is your heart, who is seated on the throne of your heart? Is it Does God determine your worth? Is he your loving father? Or did you give this seat to somebody else to sit on your heart? Only you will be able to answer that question. I'm sure Holy Spirit spoke through you, to you, during the service. When we have ancient paths, we have, a, I want to give you the tool that we use to get rid of stuff. We use a fort. Acknowledge that you've got that problem, whatever problem it is. If you have somebody else on the throne of your heart, confess it. Forgive that person that brought it in your life, whether it's somebody else, even if it's you, forgive yourself. Take ownership. God gave us the authority. When Jesus rose, he said, I give you the authority back. And remember with your words you are sowing. If you keep on saying, Jesus, help me, you sow it back. Jesus already died on the cross for you. You must say, I take up the authority, and in Jesus' name, it will end here today. Close doors if you have to close doors. Renounce, and then you deliver blessings. I'm going to end off in a prayer. If there's somebody that would like us to pray with you, to pray this through, you're welcome. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for this day. You are an awesome God. Thank you that you loved us first, that you love us with an un unconditional love. Lord, I pray that each one of us will be sensitive to the words that we are speaking, that what we speak, that it will be uplifting. And in the name of Jesus, I come today and I break every 
negative word, the power of the negative words that were spoken over each one here. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will keep on working, that you will be the now predicate, that you will somehow wake them up during the night and remind them of stuff and that they can work through it so that they can be restored to the purpose that they called for. Father, in the name of Jesus, we consecrate ourselves to you and your purpose in our lives and in our generation. We declare that we are receiving a fresh measure of your grace to complete the assignment previous given to us. With faith and obedience, we align ourselves to pass under the shepherd's rod and come into the new season you have for each one of us. Thank you that these are the days of acceleration and that your plans and purposes will be swiftly established in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Music